Now, according to a random seller on Amazon, in this box, we have an 8K mini gaming PC, which if it's anything like the 4K gaming PC I bought off of Amazon a while ago, it's probably not gonna be able to game in 8K. But maybe, you know, we'll, we'll find out later in the video. But before we do that, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor that helped pay for uh, what, what definitely is going to be a functioning 8K gaming system. Today's video is sponsored by Be Quiet and their truly badass Dark Power 12 series of power supplies. Available in capacities from 750 watts all the way up to an eye-watering 1500 watts with an 80 plus titanium rated efficiency, you know it's made from the good stuff. My favorite thing about the Dark Power 12 series of power supplies, other than the inclusion of these beautiful knurled thumb screws for easy installation, is that they use a 12 pin to dual 8 pins for the VGA power cable, which means your graphics card is much less is likely to overdraw that connector. Treat yourself to a truly baller power supply using the link in the description below. Thank you Be Quiet for sponsoring today's video. Oh, well that's a great start. It says gaming PC right on the box, so that's like 50% of the advertising already correct? Now, in all fairness to it, horrendous marketing aside, it does seem like a pretty cool little PC. Oh, it's got a nice little handle. Oh, it's pretty cute. Now here, next to GPU and CPU multiple fans for cooling, there's a picture that hints at the definitely an 8K gaming graphics card in here. Now in the box, we get a very serious looking DisplayPort cable. We also get what looks like, I'm assuming, an 8K gaming stand. And then we have this HuntKey 150 watt power brick. And here's our PC. Ooh. Wow, there is a lot of ventilation on this thing, which is good for cooling all of that 8K power. And then on the front, we have the brand name, Hystow, Histo, Hysterectomy. Swiftly moving on, on this side, we have a power button, which sounds okay, but I'm pretty sure that's upside down. And then we have uh, two USB 2 ports and two USB 3 ports. Now around the back, we have some disappointingly basic rear I.O. for such a powerful gaming system. Also, these two HDMI ports don't actually do anything because the CPU that's supposedly in here doesn't have an iGPU in it. And then these are the ports for the 8K gaming graphics card in the system, which funnily enough, as far as I know, the actual 8K video output capability of these ports is a bit of a mixed bag, but we'll talk more about that once we open up the system and have a closer look at the graphics card inside. Now, uh, I need to figure out how to open it up. I actually think it's gonna be pretty straightforward. It looks like it's just two screws on each side. What time it is, it's time for David to struggle opening a thing. Oh! Okay, that's not good. I don't know, do I just undo screws until someone happens? Is that a good approach? Oh, now it's feeling real loose, real loosey-goosey, like someone's just gonna pop out. Now, in standard fashion, I spent the next 20-odd minutes struggling to open the little bastard up, when I finally decided, yeah, I should probably test it before I break it trying to savage it open. Okay, well, we're now in the future. I have witnessed the glory that is 8K gaming on a PC the size of an adolescent chinchilla. And now, if I break it, it's not that big a deal. Now, I really want to open the system for a couple of reasons. The first one is I am a child and I have to look inside literally everything. And then the second reason is I want to do a mild upgrade on this PC so that it can do some real 8K. Now, apparently, I prematurely chickened out because it was actually really easy to open up. I just missed a couple of screws over the back of the graphics card and then it just kind of popped open. So, oh, oh yeah, okay. Just kind of slide the top off uh, and then it opens it up. And there we have the inside of our 8K gaming PC. Now, the first thing that stands out to me about this is despite the fact that this is specced with 32 gigs of RAM for some reason, uh, they still just went with a single stick. 
So this is a single 32 gig stick of laptop RAM in here. Uh, and then next to that complete abomination, we have a pretty decent looking cooler for a low profile system like this. Now that low profile cooler is cooling an Intel i5-9400F, which is a several generation old Intel CPU at this point, And it makes me think this little PC has been sitting in a warehouse for a while. And then next to that, we have a GTX 1650, a natural choice for an 8K gaming PC. Now, actually, in all fairness to the little GTX 1650, it does have a DisplayPort 1.4 port on it, which can actually output an 8K 60Hz signal. Although, that does not mean it can drive 8K 60Hz. And the two HDMI ports on there are HDMI 2.0, which top out at 8K 30Hz. And unfortunately, 30Hz on the best of days leads to a pretty terrible gaming experience. And then finally, it's got a 250 gig King Fast SATA SSD in it. But anyway, with that, let's go back to the past, fire up the system, and see if it's got any bloatware on it. <laughs> Does it have VD? No, it doesn't. This is just a clean Windows install. Good job, Histow. Rectomy. Now we're gonna start off with some reasonable 1080p gaming, and then we'll move over to what it was marketed to do, 8K. Now at 1080p high settings, GTA 5 is running pretty well. We're getting about 100-ish frames per second, and of course it's a PC we port on the internet, so there's some CPU or memory bandwidth bottlenecking going on here. That's very standard though, at this point it would be weirder if that wasn't the case. All in all, for a system this size, it's actually running very well. Wow, the system's definitely audible, even with this paltry 1080p Battlefield 5 medium setting load that we have here. I mean, the system's barely being stressed at all. Although, funnily enough, gaming in 8K will actually alleviate this CPU slash memory bandwidth bottleneck we've got going on here, which just shows this system was clearly designed with a singular purpose in mind. Anyway, with that, let's just put an end to the terrible sarcasm and finally throw this little system to the wolves. <laughs> Now this is an LG 65 Nano 95, a native 8K display for some real 8K gaming. And immediately, there's a bit of a problem. The only video out on this system that can output a 60Hz 8K signal is the DisplayPort 1.4 port on the GTX 1650. And considering that this is a TV, we only have HDMI inputs. Which means that with this little system, we're gonna be limited to 8K 30Hz, which... Nah, that's not ideal, but you know, I guess it is still technically 8K, so let's let's give it a try. Now, considering that this is a bona fide 8K gaming PC, I am going to leave all of the settings on high because, you know, it's it's an 8K gaming PC, it should be able to handle it. Come on, that's not fun. Oh, never mind. All I had to do was turn textures down from high to normal, and now GTA seems to think it's fine. <laughs> that is some primo 8K gaming right there. Uh, I pressed W quite a while ago and he's only just started moving. I feel like maybe leaving everything on high was a bit ambitious. So let's, let's quickly change that. I mean, you know what they say, the human eye can't see above one frame per second. So honestly, we're getting double the performance we realistically need at 8K. On a serious note though, uh, one massive benefit of gaming in 8K is that we don't have a CPU bottleneck anymore. So we don't, we don't need to worry about changing the memory configuration or anything like that anymore. Now that I'm in a car, it's running a bit better, but wow, it's so bad. Look at, look at that tearing. Oh, and the input lag. I don't know, man. I feel like even if you were from one of those Amazonian tribes that's never encountered Western civilization before, and this was your first exposure to gaming, you probably wouldn't consider this as a playable gaming experience. Like, damn, this is so bad. At which point I thought it would be a good idea to try some Battlefield 5, which went well. It can't even register my inputs enough for me to get out of the options. Oh, oh, there we go. No, it, it has registered it. It's just taking. 
which was followed by another 20 minutes of me wrestling menu screens until I finally had enough. Okay, that's it. I'm done. My admittedly short attention span has run its course. This is clearly going nowhere. I mean, just Alt F4. I then tried Cyberpunk, which surprisingly went better. Hey, we've actually loaded in. Now, granted, we are just getting one frame per second, but that is a lot better than Battlefield 5. Now, before we go through the various upgrades we're going to do to this system, let's just quickly try a game that this system may actually be able to run in 8K. Well, I guess this is the game they used to determine that this is actually an 8K capable gaming PC, because here we are gaming in 8K. Good old Half-Life 2 runs on literally anything. It still feels pretty terrible because we have that 30 hertz limitation uh, of the HDMI 2.0, but we can blame the TV for that because if the TV had a DisplayPort 1.4 connection on it, uh, we would have been able to game at 60 hertz in 8K. So yeah, it, it's the TV's fault. It's as easy as that. Now, before we get to our super elegant upgrade that will give us proper 8K gaming performance from this little system, I just want to get as much performance out of this form factor as possible. And to do that, we need to drop an A2000 in here. Wow, that upgrade actually went very smoothly. We even happened to have two of the mini display ports line up with the previous I.O., which is good. And hopefully this little DVI porthole has enough girth to manage 70 watts worth of exhaust from this blower style card. Oh, and unfortunately, due to the little mini display port connectors and me not having the correct adapter, I'm not going to be able to use this setup with the TV. Now, despite the dual channel RAM upgrade, the processor in here is still holding back that new graphics card. Although it's doing much better than I was expecting, and we're still getting a lot more performance than we did with the previous graphics card. Temperature wise, it's a different story though. That new graphics card doesn't like having to spew all its heat out a little DVI hole. Now just a quick final note, I did also try and use DSR to see how this new graphics card will render 8K, uh, but for some reason these pro graphics cards have different DSR rendering factors than their gaming counterparts, so I couldn't fake 8K on it. And in all fairness, it's not like the A2000 can 8K, so we're gonna have to step it up a notch. Wow, you can hardly tell I've done anything to it. <laughs> Why do so many of my videos end up like this? Now would you look at that? All it took was a slight modification to this little system, and now we're running GTA 5 in 8K high settings with over 80 frames per second. Now I was about to say that the 3090 Ti was effortlessly running GTA 5 in 8K, and then I saw the power draw figure, which is... <laughs> That is such a ridiculous number. Battlefield 5 went from being just a menu hell to running at over 60 frames per second in 8K high settings. And in quite the humiliating turn of events, it actually seems like the CPU is the bottleneck in this situation. Now despite the nearly 40-fold performance increase we've gotten with this upgrade, even the mighty RTX 3090 Ti struggles with Cyberpunk at 8K low settings. This game <laughs> really is a beast. Having said that, it is definitely playable. And then just to quickly summarize my thoughts non-sarcastically for you thickos out there, putting this straight up ridiculous marketing aside, this little PC is quite cool. I like how modular it is and you get a lot of performance for a PC this size. However, if you take into account that I paid 1,600 Canadian dollars for this thing, that is way too much money for the system. And I can't help but think the reason they thought they could get away with that is because they put 8K in the name. Which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and until the next video, bye-bye. Thank you.